Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Razia and I'm here to help you make better skincare choices. Make sure to subscribe for weekly uploads, hit the notification bell as well, and make sure you follow me over on TikTok and Instagram for more. I'm actually doing something a little bit different today. So we know that there's always skincare launches happening consistently all throughout the year, but I will admit that sometimes I'm a little bit off the bandwagon and I haven't really caught up to the hype of these new products. But for a change, I'm actually a little bit up to date with some of these newer launches. I mean, not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to go through some of these new skincare launches and I can help you decide whether they're worth it or not. And who knows, maybe if I continue to stay up to date with these new launches, this can become a consistent series on my channel. So if that's something you wanna see, make sure you leave me a like down below. Enough rambling, let's start with the first product. First up, I've got the Alpha H Melting Moments Cleansing Balm. I love a good cleansing balm moment, so this was really interesting to me. This one just came out, I think, maybe a week ago. There's a few things I'm looking for when I'm trying to determine if a cleansing balm is right for me or not. I like it to transform from a balm to an oil, like, pretty quickly. It really needs to easily break down makeup, all types of makeup, waterproof mascara, literally everything, very easily with minimal tugging and rubbing. And then it has to emulsify very well and be very, very easy to remove. And I do not want a film left behind on my skin. This is a very nice cleansing balm. <laughs> very, very nice. And this one pretty much checks all of those boxes as well. It works really, really, really well. I am very happy and very impressed with this cleansing balm. It is priced at $60. You only need a little bit each time you use it. So I do think this jar will last you quite a decent amount of time. I don't use too much product when I'm using a balm like this because I find that I don't have to, but you know, anyway, that is just me. It has a really nice orange citrusy kind of a smell to it. It does have some citrus peel oils in there. So if you are sensitive to those, then that's something to be aware of if you're thinking of trying this product. And it does mention on the Alpha H website that you can also use this as a 10 minute hydrating mask as well if you like. So I think that's another added bonus of this product. Next, I've got a bit of a controversial one. And that's the Thayer's Witch Hazel Facial Toner. People really do have their opinions when it comes to Witch Hazel. And I think for the most part, it's an ingredient that I've kind of avoided talking. Not avoided. <laughs> it just hasn't really come up until now since Thayer's is available at Chemist Warehouse. Now, here's the thing about Witch Hazel. It's definitely one of those ingredients that has been heavily demonized in the skincare niche kind of like fragrance, but then we got over that fragrance thing when we realized fragrance is only a problem if it's a problem for you. It's not a problem for everyone. And it's a very similar situation when it comes to witch hazel. When it comes to witch hazel, there's two main reasons people have their reservations about it. The first one is that witch hazel is a natural extract and is very high in a group of antioxidants called tannins. And when it comes to tannins, they do have their benefits, but they also have their drawbacks. They can be potentially irritating and sensitizing to the skin. But I think this is one of those things that's very individualized. It's not gonna be irritating for everyone. Some of the benefits of witch hazel are that it can help with calming down redness. It also has anti-inflammatory properties and it's an astringent, so it helps with reducing the oiliness of your skin. And that's why it's something that can be quite popular for those with oily, acne-prone skin. The second issue with witch hazel is the distillation process. I think traditionally it is distilled with alcohol, so then you have a witch hazel extract that's made up of 14 to 15% alcohol. So think TN Dickinson's witch hazel toner. It's pure witch hazel extract, and you can see on the back of the bottle, it tells you it's 14% alcohol in that extract. Now, if you're applying 14% alcohol to your skin every single day, this can be quite drying. But to counter that, we've got a lot of brands and products that now use witch hazel water, which is witch hazel that has been distilled with water and they're completely alcohol free. So that takes care of that problem as well. So the Thayer's witch hazel toners are alcohol free. They're only made with witch hazel water and you've also got an unscented option as well. And to counter any drying effects you might experience from witch hazel, they've actually got quite a few hydrating ingredients in here as well. 
you've got some glycerin and you've got some aloe vera extract as well. So I think when it comes to witch hazel, it's one of those situations where rather than just focusing and fixating on the ingredient itself, it's best to look at the product and the formulation instead. I have dry acne prone skin and I've been using the Thayer's toner for like two months now and it's been completely fine on my skin type. I haven't had any sensitization. I don't feel like it's drying my skin out or anything like that. And I think this would be a really nice toning solution for those of you with oily or acne prone skin that want to use a toner with some hydration to it, but don't want something that'll be heavy on the skin. This is very watery. It absorbs right into the skin. It's not hydrating enough for my dry skin, but I think for someone with oilier skin, I think it would be a nice hydrating layer to add to your skincare routine. And then you can get the benefits of the witch hazel as well for your oily acne prone skin. I'm someone that really enjoys using toner in my routine. It's not an essential step by any means, but it is a step that I enjoy because I like to layer my hydration before topping off my skin with moisturizer. So that's why I enjoy using it. That's why I enjoy using toners basically. If you guys want a video that's solely dedicated to toners, let me know. They're a skincare product that I really enjoy using. And if there's enough interest, then maybe I'll make a video completely dedicated to toners. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd be interested in. Before using this, I have used Witch Hazel before. You've got the Fenty Skin Fat Water Toner. That was made with Witch Hazel Water as well. And you've also got the Azkly Soothing Gel Serum. That is made with Witch Hazel Water. I've used that one before and I didn't have any issues whatsoever. You've got the QV Rescue Gel, and you've also got some QV moisturizers that are made with witch hazel water as well. So again, look at the formulation, not just the ingredient. Next up, we have a sunscreen, and this is the Avan Sunscreen Aqua Fluid. There's been quite a few sunscreen launches these past few weeks. We've got the Aven, we've got the Cancer Council Fluid, we've got the Bondi Sands Fluid. We've also got a new sunscreen from the Quick Flick. You know the brand that does the stampy eyeliner? They launched a sunscreen just the other day. I have not had great experience with Event sunscreens in the past. I've only used one, their Event Emulsion. Did not work out well for me. If you've seen my very first sunscreen review video, you would know that I did not have a good experience with that one. It does have titanium dioxide in there and left me looking blue. I did not have very high expectations getting this one because it does have titanium dioxide in there as well, but I was hoping that event would prove me wrong. They did not. <laughs> I will have a video here showing my experience using this product. The things I do like about this product is the texture. I like the fluid texture and I do like how it left my skin feeling at the end of it. The Emulsion Sunscreen had a more matte finish this one left my skin feeling really nice and smooth and had a really satiny finish that I quite enjoyed. But the titanium dioxide in there was a little bit too obvious. It took a while for me to rub this one down, like a minute and a half, close to two minutes, which for me is just far too long. I don't want to spend two minutes. I don't want to spend two minutes every day rubbing my sunscreen in. And even after that, I was left looking a little bit blue. I could put some makeup on and that would counter any blue-ish look I have but I don't wear makeup every day and I don't wanna to have to wear makeup on top of my sunscreen so that I don't look like a ghost. There are plenty of good sunscreens out there where I don't have to do that, so why would I use one where I do have to do that? And it was like $25. There were like 15 other sunscreens I could grab from Chemist Warehouse for half the price that work twice as good, you know? So yeah, this one, not worth it. Don't waste your time. Now for some new sunscreen launches that are worth your time and money, We've got the Bondi Sands Hydro Fluid and the Cancer Council Fluid as well. I did review the Bondi Sands Hydro Fluid in my previous video if you want to check that out for a more in-depth review. But overall, this one is quite nice. It's got a fluid texture, really easy to apply to the skin. And this one, instead of having a glowy finish like the other Bondi Sands Hydro, this one has more of a satin finish. So if you don't want to look too shiny or greasy, then you might prefer this one. The Cancer Council Face Day Wear Fluid Matte. Again, has that fluid texture. Fluid textures are very popular this year. <laughs> anyway, this one has a fluid texture and actually dries down to a true matte finish. So I think this one is better suited for those with oilier skin that want something that's not too heavy on the skin. It's not very moisturizing, so if you have drier skin but you still want a matte sunscreen, you might need to layer a moisturizer underneath. 
Otherwise, I think if you have oilier skin, this could probably work as a moisturizer and sunscreen in one for you. It just depends how dry your skin is feeling, I suppose. So if you want to try one of the new fluid sunscreens we've got this year, try either one of these. Don't bother with the event. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to finish up with some body care. So the first body care product I'm going to talk about is this Aven Daily Moisturizing Oil Mist. When it comes to oils in skincare, I don't really love using oils on the face. When it comes to the body, however, I actually do enjoy an oil moment. It makes the skin feel really nice and soft and I appreciate that. I do like using a body oil after showering. I moisturize and then I like to top off with an oil. Remember, oils are not moisturizing on their own. If anything, they just seal in the moisture. So if you do have proper dry skin, you want to make sure you don't just rely on an oil to get your hydration and your moisture because that's not how oils work. They kind of just seal everything in. They don't really do anything else. And when it comes to oils, I don't want anything that's going to really grease up my skin. I want it to kind of dry down pretty nicely so I can put my clothes on top and not feel gross. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I grabbed this one. I was curious because it does say on the back it's a light dry touch mist and you're able to dress quickly post application. Exactly what I want. This one's made with oat kernel oil. It's a vino that's very on brand for them. They put oat in pretty much all their products. Oat is known to be very soothing for the skin. So it's good for those with sensitized or irritation prone skin. It also has jojoba oil in there, which is a really nice emollient oil. That and jojoba oil is actually very close to our body's natural sebum. So it's a very nice oil for those with dry skin. This one is fragrance though. It is not fragrance free. And this one does in fact live up to its claims. It does dry down nicely. You are able to dress afterwards without feeling greasy or gross. And it does feel and it does leave the skin feeling nice and soft. I do like that it's in a spray as well. It makes it really nice and easy to apply to the skin and then spread over the area that you need it to go. This, it smells really nice as well. The smell is so familiar, but for the life of me, I cannot put my finger on what it is, which is really annoying. If that ever happens to you, you know how frustrating it is. And I've just got one more body care product I'm gonna talk about. Two more, actually, I lied. You've got the Zit Sticker, Fizz Fountain, and Silk Shake. If you don't know, Zitstick is that brand that made the micro dart pimple patches and they have come out with some body care recently. We have the Fizz Fountain, which is an AHA, BHA exfoliant scrub. And then we have the Silk Shake, which is a probiotic body cleanser. Zitsticker make products for those with acne prone skin in mind and these two are very much on brand. These are products to target those that deal with body acne basically. And I've actually been using both of these for a few weeks. Let's start with the Fizz Fountain Scrub. As it says, it's an AHA BHA body scrub. You've got salicylic acid in here and you've got lactic and glycolic acid and you've also got niacinamide. So you get that nice exfoliation and it's actually a physical exfoliant. You've got pumice grains and bamboo powder in here and that offers the grainy texture that helps with some physical exfoliation. Physical exfoliation is something I don't really mind on the body and I think it can be quite helpful, especially if you're dealing with keratosis pilaris. Physical exfoliation really helps with that particular skin issue for me personally anyway. And you've got the chemical exfoliant in there that get to work under the surface, which is nice. This one does have peppermint extract in it as well. And it has a very strong peppermint scent to it. So I don't think that would work for everyone, but if you're someone that doesn't really have an aversion to peppermint extract, then this is a decent body scrub you might want to consider. It does leave my skin feeling as though it's just been exfoliated, which is nice. And it definitely does help to smooth out the area. I like to mainly focus scrubs on this upper forearm because that's where I tend to be the most keratosis pilaris prone. And using a product like this a couple times a week helps to keep that in check. Now we have the Silk Shake Probiotic Cleanser. This one's a really interesting product. It doesn't have the chemical exfoliants like the Fizz Fountain Scrub. Instead, it's probiotic. And the claims that this product has is that it helps to support your skin's microbiome. So support the good flora and diminish the bad blemish causing bacteria. Doesn't have any harsh surfactants in there. It's got some nice gentle surfactants while still giving you a really satisfying lather. I like a really lathery body wash. 
Um, it's not for everyone, but it's definitely something that I prefer when I'm using a body wash. And you've also got some tea tree in here. Again, tea tree is one of those ingredients that can help those with blemish prone skin, but it also can be quite sensitizing because it is a natural extract. So I do find the concept of this one interesting. The whole microbiome probiotic situation is interesting. But to be honest, I don't really deal with body acne. It's not an issue for me anymore. So I can't speak to how effective this would be at controlling body acne because that's not something I deal with. But if that's something that you deal with and you're looking for a body wash that really is targeted to those with body acne, I think this might be interesting and you might want to look into it a little further, look into some of the reviews and see how it works for those that deal with body acne. The last thing I'm going to mention about these zit sticker products is the twisty tops. I like twisty tops and yeah, these have twisty tops. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Those are a lot of the new skincare launches that I have tried recently and my thoughts on them. So let me know if you enjoy this type of video and let me know if you'd want to see more of these in the future. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a like down below. It really helps my channel out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and don't go anywhere. Check out some of the other videos I've got on my channel. I have some good ones on here for you and I'll see you in the next one.